All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this render right here. We're going to be making some simple water, this really cool rock material, and this twisty, cool abstract model. But before I do that, let's get into today's sponsor. So today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. We've just entered 2020, a new decade. So if you want to go in and learn some new skills and up your year, deepen your existing passions and get lost in your creativity, Skillshare has tons of online classes that are right for you. If you don't know about Skillshare, it is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth and creativity. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life, so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. Skillshare has tons of Blender tutorials, and there we got some soft body stuff. We got liquid and water animations. We got interior stuff. There's a lot of classes on there that are really high quality for you to go on and explore. Personally, I'm a graphic designer, so I have to work with logos. So George Boca's class called Logo Design with Grids, Timeless Style with Simple Shapes. I've learned a lot from. It's been really fruitful in my work. Skillshare is also really, really affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. It's an annual subscription of $10 a month. In the description, you can get two free months of a premium membership to explore your creativity. You can get that in the description. So now let's get into the tutorial. We're gonna be using two really cool add-ons for this, but first, delete everything out of your scene, go to File, I mean Edit, Preferences, and go to the Add-ons and type in Landscape. Right here, you're gonna see a and Landscape. Just click the little check mark and you'll have it. So we're gonna go and pick a uh, model to make our sort of hill. So right down here on Mesh, you'll see Landscape pop in a landscape right down here for you and you get all these selects. Now keep in mind if you click away you're gonna lose this so you have to delete it re um, and then re-import the uh, you know the model. So make sure you don't click away and you stay in here. So you have your operator presets so I think we're gonna be using Canyon if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well this is one of them just to show you the actual uh, the this add-on it gives you these really cool simple uh, models for just quick landscapes, quick iterating, things like that. Uh, I think it's actually Gully. Yeah, so we're going to be using Gully. And then right down here, there's a really cool thing right here where it says Noise. You can use these and uh, change things up. Um, but I'm going to go with uh, Marble because it looks the best for this. And then right down here, you see Effect. You can do some really cool stuff with that and change up how your, um, your thing looks. So if you just go to the Effects right here, you can see Zigzag. You can see Gradient, um, Cracks, a little, more, a little bit more obvious. So you can get, you can get some variation. And, uh, but I'm going to go with none and just keep it like this. And then you can play with the height, all that kind of stuff to really edit the way you would like your, your thing to look. All right, so I'm going to use this right here. And I'm going to click away. And this is it. As you can see, you have some really nice topology. It's all quads. It's really, really good. You can add a sub, subdivision surface modifier to this. Now, you can see it's really crappy and low, low poly looking. Don't worry about that part. Once we add in the material on top of it, you won't even be able to notice. One thing I want to do is sort of mirror this right here. So first off, I'm going to hit S5 to give it a pretty decent size in our scene. I'm going to hit Control A and click Scale so that we apply the scale so it affects our, um, so it doesn't affect our materials and things like that. So first off, I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add an empty plane axis. I'm going to hold down Control and I'm going to bring it to the very edge. So if you hold down Control, you can see it snaps. Hold to the very edge, and let's go over here and add the mirror modifier. And unclick X right here on mirror object. Click your empty, and I believe it's Z, no, Y. So you have this, and then you can just add an array modifier to this here, and um, negative one, and then you can just, you know, duplicate that forever. So now you can see it kind of loops it whenever you're in the actual perspective. You can barely tell that it's looped, especially when we add in our depth of field. Now we're gonna add in some water. So shift A, plane, and we're gonna put the plane right here at the middle of our scene here. And then we're gonna scale it up. We're gonna hit the scale tool over here and scale it all the way this way. Go back to the move tool and then bring it up so we can actually see the water. So now we have a little bit of water in our scene that's gonna go right in the middle. Now, now let's start adding in our material. So we're gonna go to the material preview and you can see Obviously nothing's happening. So you click on our plane, click new material, no roughness, and bring your transmission all the way up. We have our water now. Let's go ahead and make that material for this guy right here. So we'll go to the shading tab and we'll start that. Let's go click new material. We're gonna color ramp right here. 
All right, so now we're gonna pick the colors that our rock is gonna be. So first off, add the color ramp to the base color, and let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and make those colors, but first let's go from linear to constant so we get some hard edges in our colors, which is gonna be beneficial for the rocks. So we're gonna keep this one white. Uh, we're gonna make this one sort of a sort of dark orangey kind of look, I'd say right about there, make it a little bit darker. Let's hit the plus icon, and we're gonna add sort of a maroon kind of red make it a little bit darker, make it a little bit more vibrant, something like that, and then we'll make another one. Whoops, I hit the minus icon. We'll get another one, bring it over here, and make it completely black. So this is the colors that we're gonna be using. Now let's go ahead and add a noise texture right here. Plug factor into the color ramp. Now we get sort of like a camouflage look, which is not what we're trying to go for. So let's get this and hit Control T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, and then use the object coordinate here and now you can see it gets worse, but don't worry, we're gonna get a separate XYZ right here, and we're gonna plug it right behind the noise texture, and we're gonna be using the Y axis to make it go this direction, which is what we're looking for. Now, we can add in some detail if we want, add in this, but it's not looking very rocky at the moment. Uh, we need to add some distortion in the actual lines that we're looking at. So let's go ahead and take the texture coordinate and pop in a noise texture right there in the vector line and it screws it all up. So we need a mix RGB to, to regulate how much of this mix of this noise right here we're gonna use. So put the object coordinate into color two and if you watch, if we bring it all the way to the factor of one, we get the original look. All the way to the factor of zero, we get completely noise texture. So all we're doing here is just adding a little bit of distortion in those lines. Now you can see it's gonna give you a more rocky look. And then the last thing we need to do to really translate a rocky look is add in a bump node, plug the normal into the normal, and then we're gonna plug this noise texture which applies everything over here, right here into the height. And now you can see we get some nice rocks. We can even bring up the detail a little bit and we get some really cool rocky looks and then if you don't want it to be that strong, of course you can bring it all the way down, add just a little bit of bump, but I like it all the way up, maybe just a little bit farther down. And now we get these really cool rocks. Now we can go back and adjust the colors till we get uh, more of what, what we want. I want some white here. And then maybe bring the scale down so we get some bigger stripes. And now we're getting this really, really cool rocky uh, terrain look. And I'm gonna be using cycles to do the final render, so I'm gonna hit Z rendered view, and right up here I'm gonna be using one of the default HDRIs to check it out. It's a little bit too shiny, so I'm gonna bring the roughness up pretty far to give it a little bit more of a rock look. Cool, now we need to get that water going. Now let's bring it up a little bit. I want some more water in the uh, view. Go back to the shading. I'm actually hit Control A to apply scale in case I didn't do that. I'm gonna get a bump node right here. Plug into the normal of our water material, add in a noise texture. Hit Control T to add a texture setup to add the object coordinate. Get factor, plug that into the height. And we're gonna get water ripples. Just a second, bring the strength down. Now we get some nice water. Now keep in mind, the uh, the more detail you add, the um, sort of bigger your water is gonna look. So if you want it to be like a really, really big water canyon, you can add the detail all the way up and now it looks really big. Um, so you can bring it down just to, depending on the scale and the size you want your canyon to look. Um, this is another thing that's gonna translate actual scale. And then you can bring your strength up like this as well. So I like that, kinda looks like calm, fairly calm water in this big canyon. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna add a new add-on which is gonna get that really cool abstract model you saw in the image. We're gonna add an extra object. So if you type in extra right here, mesh add extra objects and click that and you're gonna get a really cool thing. So I'm gonna hit H to just clear our whole scene here. I'm gonna hit Shift A in the mesh. You're gonna see math function and go to XYZ math surface. And when that happens, you're gonna get a shell by default. This is the preference, I mean the, the default one. If you wanna use that, you can. But the operator presets has tons of really cool um, pre-made objects in there and you can actually go in and screw with uh, different parameters until you like what you see. So I'm gonna go in and re do that again, if you do click away, you're gonna lose that, that dialogue. Uh, so I'm gonna go in and pick some different ones here. And I'm gonna do Twisted Taurus, which is the original one that I used. And then I'm gonna subdivide it once, make it nice and smooth, shade smooth, and let's bring everything back. 
I'm gonna hit RX 90 to flip it the direction I like. And I'm gonna place it right about here. But before I finish placing it, let's go ahead and get that camera um, set into our scene. So Shift A, add your camera. Now, now select the area you kinda want it to be viewed in. Hit Control Alt Zero, snaps that camera to view, and I'm gonna give it right here on focal length. If you click on the camera settings, I'm gonna give it a 24 millimeter lens to get nice and wide, which is another thing that will communicate the scale of your canyon. And we're gonna go right about here, Z rendered, see how that's looking. It's looking really nice. Let's scale down here. So you can go ahead and place this guy wherever you'd like. In my original render, uh, which I would do again if I could, um, but this is just to show you guys how it works. My canyon uh, was a little bit more wide, so it gave more space for this thing, which I could just actually bring the water up. So if I want, I could just bring my water up a little bit more to give the uh, this guy a little bit more space to rest right here in the water. So I think that looks really good. Z rendered view, we'll see how that's looking. So that's looking really, really good. Now let's go ahead and add in our own HDR. If you were to render this, Blender does not render the default HDRs in them, they're just for previewing. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna type in HDRI Haven right here, hdrihaven.com. It's all free HDRIs that you can add into your scene. So I want one that's really nice and has some nice clouds in it because we're gonna use the sky in it as well. So I'm gonna hit the 4K, just go ahead and pick whatever HDRI you'd like to use. All right, so now the way you import the HDRIs into your scene, so I'm gonna go back and click scene world, scene lights, everything's gonna be dark. So you click on this world here, click that icon, environment texture, and then open the HDRI that you selected. Mine was sunflowers, 4K HDR. Now we have a really cool light. Now, if you don't like where your sun is pointing, you're not actually uh, confined to that default. If you go back to the shading tab, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the EV preview and then drop down and do scene world, scene light, so we can use that HDR that we're using. So if I don't, I don't like the direction it's going in. So right down here in the shader menu, go from object to world, and then I'm gonna hit control T to do another texture setup. So on the rotation, you can actually rotate the HDRI to move that sun to whatever you'd like it to be. All right, this looks really nice. So now we have some direct sunlight going. Let's go ahead and add in the material for this guy. So we're gonna click new, we're gonna make it metallic, we're gonna make it zero roughness, and let's bring it a little bit darker. So that's it's as simple as that. This really cool dark chrome material is very eye-catching, which is why I use it. It's a really nice focal point for the design um, here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm at Shift A, and I'm going to add in an icosphere. I'm gonna subdivide him just like that, and then bring him up, and then fit him right here in the middle of this guy. And I'm gonna add that same material to him. All right, so one last thing I'm gonna to add to this render is I wanna have a little bit more glossiness here on this um, this canyon here. Now, the, keep in mind with these abstract kind of environments, you don't have to stick to total photorealism because these are surreal landscapes. There's a, you, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of fun you can have with them. So I just wanna have a little bit more glossiness. So with these, don't worry too much about photorealism. Just have a lot of fun and be artistic. Now add this noise texture here to the color ramp and then plug the color ramp into the roughness and then you can take the white portion. If you bring it all the way over, you're gonna get total roughness again. Uh, so we want just the light to be having some fun with our scene. You can see it happening over there now. Um, and then you can go ahead and play with these, uh, these sliders until you get some really cool results that you're happy with here in this canyon. So this is the render that we're doing. You can actually go ahead and pick a different HDRI if you don't like the direct sunlight. This actually isn't the most optimal uh, look. Um, and I would actually go back and pick a different HDRI. I'm not the biggest fan of this one, but this is just to show you how it looks, how it works. And yeah, there you go. For render settings, you can do this in Eevee. They both work. Nothing is specific to either render engine on this particular render. I'm going to be using cycles, so I'm going to keep it at the default 128 um, samples. And I'm just going to hit render, render image, and you're going to see the final result. So this is the final result. I would do some compositing, add a little bit of vignette, add some more color correction to this to improve the look. Usually you don't wanna stay with the render output. But yeah, this is the result that we got from the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something new. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.